are embarking on here for season two of 2023. Welcome along to the opening round of the season and the Hockenheim ring, of course. My name is Julia Leary. I'm alongside Dara Facker for this evening. And we've got two races coming up tonight, Dara, with plenty of action lined up as well. No reverse bridge for us, of course, but we do have the great selection of cars, the great selection of Porsche Carrera Cup cars that are on this grid and a great selection of drivers who are currently out there qualifying right now in what's set to be a new exciting season for the Race Room Ranks Championship. Absolutely, and Hockenheim is definitely a cracking place to do it. Great racing all around this historic circuit and some of the drivers we've got here this evening. Pedigree in the Race Room Ranks Championship of the category and a few new names as well. So it'll be interesting to see how they cope. Uh, here in the two races that we've got. This will be 20 minutes in the second one, here, 30. Um, but yeah, very much looking forward to this one. Starting a new season uh, in the race. Our first of four rounds went together as normal, but this will be the format for the, the whole of it, 20 minutes, then 30. This is the schedule. Now, you'll notice if you were with us last week for the MX-5s, and I suggest that you are with us every week. It's 12 weeks of racing uh, pretty much in a row. I think get a little di different around Christmas, but we'll get to that, of course. Uh, it's the Hockenheim we'll be starting with, then Imola in three weeks' time. Donington at the start of December, and then Bathurst at the end of the year. Well, the end of the year, it's actually the start of the next year, but you get what I mean. It's the end of the season uh, for the Carrera Cup this season. A great place to have a finale, by the way. And over the course of the three championships, we'll be visiting 12 different circuits. Not a single one appears twice. And so that is, uh, that's great news. We get a bit of a variety this time, Dara. I mean, if you're watching every, every single week, then by week three in the GT3 Pro Series, you'll be getting a bit tired of whichever circuit it is. But we're switching it up every single time on this occasion. It was Laguna Seca last week for the MX-5s. This time, Hockenheim ring for us in the Carrera Cup. So we'll be off some, somewhere new the week, the next week, and then the week after that. Just switches things up every single time now, rather than we going to every single track for all of the categories and all the championships we're running this season. Yeah, absolutely, you get a great mix of tracks. I mean, you look here, Hockenheim, Imola, Donington and Bathurst, all four of them um, give great characteristics of the tracks. And in the other two categories of the Rank Championship as well, in the MX-5 and the Pragas, they go to some fantastic tracks as well. So it gives that added little bit, uh, added little element of um, a nuance for some of the drivers, particularly um, if they are more focused on one theory than the other. I mean, last season, when we saw some of the drivers in all three categories, they could get that uh, practice on the circuit through the first two weeks, and then when it came to the GT3s, they were able to uh, know the circuit nearly from memory. So it gives that little bit of a challenge this time around, just to see how it goes uh, at new tracks every week. Uh, but once again, we're not going back to the format of 2022, where we're taking on more than one series at a, a, a single Day, uh, as we did in season one of 2022 we did all three in one day and that's no longer the case you can do multiple championships if you want to of course over the course of this season let's take a little look at where we are today the Hockenheim uh, because it is a circuit steeped in history 1931 this circuit originally opened but as we know Darrell or maybe we don't um, this circuit used to be a lot different to what it is now of course I, I would I, I know we, we, we weren't alive in either of us during those that, that period I'm um, sorry to those who were but we, we you know it's a historic circuit for those moments where we went raced into the forest had those chicanes the long right hander of course uh, as well that famous racetrack unfortunately is no more it does have still remnants of that of course the final sector is in fact almost exactly the same these days even though there are, the rest of the circuit has gone on such radical changes it was such a iconic section of this racetrack that, in, that is unfortunately no longer with us and I believe has been reclaimed by nature actually um, in more recent times but uh, we do still have a, a circuit to work with here and a big stop instead in towards the hairpin on this version instead of going to the forest we take a sharp right at turn two take that long left hander through the parabolica and then have that really sharp hairpin at turn six yeah and it can cause a couple of problems if you break just that little bit too late it as you tag the drive in front of you, and the grid's so close together uh, as this one is, we might see uh, quite a few trains forming, and that might be something that we have to look out for down into the hairpin. But other overtaking opportunities as well, down um, towards turn two as well, you can try and get down the inside and try and get yourself ahead before that long uh, run through the parabolica towards the hairpin. But yeah, um, Hockenheim, just because we're young with the snap with you, and doesn't mean we can't appreciate. Uh, the historic um, nature of this track um, and hopefully we'll be able to get some good racing at it tonight. 
don't know if anyone's called me that before, but uh, but I'll take him. <laughs> for that. Um, here's the car we're taking on today, of course, and throughout the season. It's the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car that runs in sort of 992 sort of categories in sports car racing generally. Just over 500 horsepower uh, here. And, and obviously, we, we're likely, Dara, to compare it to the KTM. And I guess this series is probably most like the KTM GTX trophy that we had last season, you know, for a single make sports car, high end sports car kind of category then this car does deliver. It's the sort of newer version of the Porsche Cup car, of course, and it is very, very fast these days. Not even that much slower than the gt 3 which unfortunately don't return for the 2023 uh, Season 2 Championship. So a lot of pressure is put on this championship in terms of those who want to do GT racing in the Race Room Rank Championship. This is your only really chance because the Mazda MX-5s are obviously a lot, lot slower and the Praga Cup is almost sort of a prototype kind of thing. So uh, this is the only time for real GT racing you get here in the Carrera Cup. And that maybe has just elevated the, uh, the sort of level of the field as if it didn't need to be elevated anymore from last season and the KTM GTX trophy, which we've both enjoyed, of course. Yeah, absolutely. We know a thing or two about that uh, championship last season. But yeah, the grid, some of the drivers that have come this evening are just the top quality on the platform. So Colin Blankenberg, Lucian of it for Alessandro Ottaviani and Nico Kunza as well. I mean, they are just to name a few. I could go on and on um, with the names here this evening, but there are some fantastic drivers. You look at the likes of Peter Daniel and Marvin Mackenberg who appear everywhere. Uh, they are good in all, um, uh, in all different categories. Um, so I think it's going to be incredibly interesting this evening just to see who can come out on top um, in this, at the start of the season, which is all important in just a four-round championship when points on the board early on can be absolutely critical. On a four to have a bad round as we keep going back to the example of Ilya Drodostakov in the first of the BMW uh, series uh, back at the BMW M2 35i Cup. Uh, the final round, he got it wrong and uh, dropped out despite winning the preceding three races. Still didn't win the championship as a result of a bad final race. That is how much pressure is in every single one of these rounds. And I just wonder what that's going to mean for the uh, for the ballast here, Dara, because we do know that the top three who sign up for the, the top three best placed in the championship drivers who sign up for each round, pop and round one, of course, um, get. Uh, ballast according to their position so first place 25 kilos second place 18 third place get 15 now first of all i wonder what kind of effect that's going to have in a car that's actually pretty heavy anyway uh just over a thousand kilograms um how much is that sort of weight going to actually affect these drivers is it going to make much difference that is still yet to be seen of course but also what is that going to mean for the championship and how is this going to play out? Because normally, for example, in the KTM GTX Trophy, we saw some big names emerge like Luciano Vitva and Enzo Filippo, who won three races each during those eight that we saw in that championship, of course, two races per night. That's not going to be happening again, you wouldn't imagine. Surely that's going to open it up to a lot of people being involved in the championship and, and maybe people trying not to be in the lead of the championship going into the final round because they don't want the full ballast for that finale at Bathurst. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're looking at per the person in P4 after the third round at Donington who might be uh, feeling very happy about themselves because they might have the best chance at the win. But it does really open up that field uh, across all of the races, all eight that we have in this season. Actually, there, I'm not continuing that lap. But yeah, I mean, the success, but it does add that added um, difficulty for those drivers at the front that we didn't have in previous seasons, like in the KTM, because they've got to think uh, about the long game, about the championship, and knowing that. You know, even going further up a, a risky move, yes, it might gain you more points, but it might cost you in terms of ballast in the future race. So that might create a little bit more tactics through the season, and it will almost certainly come down to the final race. And I think that is something that we've got to look forward to. That might be um, a, a four, maybe even five away fight for the title. A few improvements coming in at the moment. Orbital was actually uh, making some improvements earlier on, but it's uh, Charlie Monk here, who is probably most likely to go a little bit quicker. Currently 20th is the British driver, 1.6 seconds off of Alessandro Ottaviani, who looks like he's going to take pole position here at Hockenheim, the uh, opening race of the season. As we mentioned, no reverse grid, of course, so a big chance to take the full 50 points away from the end of the day. Through the uh, right-hander goes Monk right now. That's turn 10, of course, and then into the very fast mobile one curve. This is... Uh, turn 11. 
get the results up on your screen, but of course Monk will be able to go a little bit quicker. We'll see if he does and we'll update you if so. But Alessandro Ottaviani is going to take pole here at Hockenheim. It's a 41-1 for him, nearly half a second quicker than Colin Blankenberg, who took his first ever race room ranked championship win in the very final round of the GT3 Pro Series towards the end of Season 1 in 2023. The eventual champion of that series, Luciano Vitver, is third, ahead of uh, 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 Nico Kunza, who's in fourth. Then it's Martin Petterman in fifth, with Victor Straitmans in sixth. It's an all-Hungarian fourth row, with Bautas Nozzi and Christian Orban on that one. Villa Krevi and Mihai Nez round out the top ten. Then it's Felix Bjorn for Sweden, ahead of Marvin Mackenberg, who is oddly without his brother in twelfth. Petter Daniel is only 13th ahead of David Nemchek. Then it's Alessandro Botti, who is 15th. He'll be alongside Radoslav Orbital in 16th. Then it's Marcin Vitalek in 17th ahead of Frida Braun. Uh, Martin Havlana and Charlie Monk round out the top 20 uh, as they guys get gridded up on the grid for a standing start. And that's going to be a difficulty in itself, Darren. Walking these cars off the line is not an easy operation sometimes in the Carrera Cup. Absolutely uh, right there, Ewan. I mean, and it's going to be difficult into turn one here at Hockenheim. Of course, it is naturally a relatively fast opening corner, but it really does pinch up on the apex. Uh, and we've seen many, many a turn one crash over the years in all different categories. Um, from F1 to DTM here at turn one at Hockenheim. So, you know, I think there's going to be a, an added uh, challenge for these drivers just to get through the opening corner because once you do it's a little bit more open towards the second braking zone but it's going to be all important to get the jump off of the line um, and to try and get maybe an inside maybe an outside line down into turn one but it'll be difficult it's going to be exciting to see who can get the jump though absolutely is about a minute until we get the green by the way Alessandro Ottaviano was very very quick in qualifying of course nearly half a second faster than the rest of the field and surely that stands him in good stead for the race and and maybe puts a worry into everybody else that he's going to absolutely <laughs> run away with both of the races with no reverse grid absolutely and um you never know i mean if he does win if he, if he turns up next week he may not be able to have that same kind of um advantage as we mentioned with the success ballots um, that we have got so you know it's good to get the points on the board but at the same time if he wins both the races here it doesn't necessarily mean he'll be winning next week absolutely and of course you don't get points for individual races by the way in the race room ranked championship you get an overall score for a round which gives which ranks you uh, you know one through however many there are and then you get put into uh, points positions for a round rather than the races individually so bear that in mind as we get the race room ranked championship Carrera Cup underway for 2023 we are green at Hockenheim and it's not a good start from Straitmans at all in the background there Victor Straitmans is already from sixth place right Right outside the top 10, in towards turn one go the drivers and it's Alessandro Rottaviani who converts that pole position into an early race lead. Colin Blankenberg stays second with Luciano Vitt for third, although wide is Rottaviani in towards turn two. Not particularly good on the brakes at all as they all do make it through turn one and I believe turn two as well. Rottaviani's going to be under supreme pressure now already from Colin Blankenberg who already has that one win. Germany in the race room ranked championship. That was at the north side. Now looking for one at the Hockenheim ring as well. Down in towards the hairpin they'll go. This is where the action is going to be today. And there already is as Ottaviani slides wide into the hairpin. Very wide he goes indeed. A brief yellow flag but Blankenberg is not able to capitalise on it. And the top four at least, top three or four at least, make their way out of the hairpin. Still single foul, still in the positions that they qualified in. Yeah, even with the front guys single file, the, at the back you can see them flying through there. They are two, three wide as they come in towards the Mercedes Benz corner. Um, and then they fly through towards the left, uh, the right hand, I should say. They are still two wide to the big pack. Charlie Monk, I think, is trying to make up moves on Braun, but he's going to get through this time around Orban. On the back of Petterman, he fight with see Bjorn and Marvin Mackenberg side by side to the end of the same section for the first time. And it's difficult to go two wide through here, but they're going to try it. Yeah, they are. Felix Bjorn round the outside here, and he's not going to make that happen. Petter Daniel will also get his nose in there. Both of them, of course, in the blue and yellow, and that will allow Alessandro Botti to get closer in the sort of green and blue, if you like, over the line for the first time. And it's Alessandro Ottaviani who leads the way here at Hockenheim. Then Colin Blankenberg, Luciano Vitman, and Nico Kunza, the top four right now. Blankenberg has not had the best of starts. He did have a brief chance to maybe put some pressure on Ottaviani. He couldn't do that, and now he's got to alleviate some of his own pressure because Vitbert is right behind him. 
absolutely. And we all know what Luciano Lippert can do. He was a championship contender, I think, in all three series in uh, season one of the race room at Cavendish, or at least he was in two. So he has got some absolutely degree behind him as he's going to try and get into P2. But we see him on and nothing like looking backwards. He'd rather be looking forwards, but there is a blue and yellow train forming behind him. It'll be on down the inside of the hairpin this time around. Peter Daniel around for any mistakes from these two and behind them it's Botti and Nej who are also in some blue and green machinery but as they get oh through no. Mexico, just about ahead this did be hard it was Des Brontes who looked to be the one right sideways Erbis lost out on a couple of positions as well Yannick yeah, Erbis who's uh, just outside the top 20 there's a big dive there from uh, behind Nej is it maybe yes it is on the outside, he was trying to go around the outside of Alessandro Botti, who's in exactly the same livery as he is, and Nez just got that all wrong into the Mercedes arena. He goes very deep into the corner, and he'll lose places as well. These cars are not comfortable on the brakes. There's a lot of movement going on there in those braking zones. Maybe, maybe Wednesday night, but it does bit, look a bit like Strictly out there, because they are dancing all over the road as they get onto the brakes. But here we go, Petter Daniel, I think, is still defending here from Bjorn, both of them in there. Interesting blue and yellow, a little bit more Caribbean than European, but it's a little bit pushed wide maybe from Bjorn. The Swedish driver just giving him a tap, it seemed, and Daniel, but either way, he's gone wide to help the position. There's now quite a big gap between himself and Mark and Mackenberg up ahead, so he's not going to get the benefit of much slipstream down towards the hairpin, and that could bring him under quite a bit of pressure from the likes of uh, uh, Bjorn and Botti in behind. But what a train forming now for P10 um, as they all fly through turn one towards turn two. Botti there was uh, being hounded slightly by De Straitmans, who is still down in 13th. Despite qualifying well inside the top 10, he's really struggled off the start. Of course, really struggled to get that car actually off the line. Uh, and that's what's contributed to most of his problems. Bowser's Nodge is on the defensive from his, t uh, well, not his teammate, his compatriot, excuse me, Christian Orban, who was trying to make a move into the hairpin. Those two shared row four off the start, but have both overtaken Straitmans on the start and Straitman's might be overtaken again. Nemchek tried to go through and Mihai Nez goes around entirely. The Romanian having a bit of a disaster, unfortunately. He maybe didn't qualify to his high standards and now he's certainly at lower than he would have hoped to be at the start of the day. Right down to last place for the Romanian. Yeah, I think he got a bit of a tap there into the hairpin. Um, I, I think he was just uh, carried around. Uh, into the spin there, I don't, I don't think that was him trying to get on the power, but either way, right at the back of the field, that's not what he would have wanted, but I do remember um, at the first race of the KTM Championship last season, he started pretty much last in race two, and came home for P7, I believe, in the end, or around there anyway, so um, he's definitely got the chance, he's done it before, he'll have to do it again, it'll be difficult, uh, but he has got the history, but look at these guys, too wide, through the stadium section, uh, and Vitalex as well, trying to get through um, for P17, oh and he will because that's the spin, oh and there's massive contact there. Labner it is, Labner in the, in the Porsche, it goes around at the penultimate corner and I think got clipped by someone as well. Real shame for the Slovakian newbie. Oh no, and tipped straight into the wall, it was one of the, uh, Mish it was. Oh goodness me, there's a lot of contact there. It was Gaspar Mish who joins right in front of Mihai Nez. Well that rejoin wasn't too smart unfortunately. The initial incident itself, I don't think, was Mish's fault, but it, the rejoin certainly was. And uh, Nez is the one who pays the price. He's got no front end at all now, down in 31st. It's getting a little bit messier down at the back of the field as these cars are proving fairly tricky to control. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah he's having one of the worst evenings we've seen. Uh, it's only been half, uh, not even half, it's been about a quarter of race one, and he is already struggling. Um, Vitaletch now, I think, had a problem, and Davila as well, dropping down the order. The Spaniard um, is dropping and dropping and dropping, and it's just giving more places to the likes of uh, Isbronte. So he's back up to E15, Walktow as well, up to 16th. So these guys are just avoiding the collisions and picking up positions because of it, and they won't be complaining at all. But up front, it, it is strung out a little bit in this opening race, isn't it? Uh, Ottaviani very comfortably out front with, uh, with Blankenberg and Bitfoot and Kunzer and Petterman. None of them are really fighting with each other. Um, and it's kind of a bit pedestrian at the moment, but of course it will bunch up for the end of race one to the start of race two for the grid. But um, yeah, the, the top five, they are much more pedestrian than it is further back. And we'll have to see if it develops this way, whether some drivers will come back at others. 
Well, it does sort of depend on how the race is going to change, really, because if you think about it, we would only be a quarter of the way through the uh, second race distance as well. That's half an hour, which could uh, bring a few more people into play, or maybe not, depending on how the race develops and how wearing these tyres are, how difficult it gets towards the end of the races. But, I mean, these cars have got so little downforce that even corners like two, three and four really matter in terms of your line. Normally, or in some categories anyway, it doesn't really matter what line you take through turn three because it will be flat out through three and four anyway that little left-hander but it's certainly not in this car you do have to think about it very hard indeed down and towards the hairpin go the two hungarians it's not an orban who are fighting side by side it was certain uh, who comes out the other side with the position though there's another battle actually a little bit further back than that going side by side on the way towards the hairpin there but i don't think there were any changes of position in fact them stay exactly uh, where they are for the moment. Just a moment of calm, really, as we approach the halfway mark of the opening race. Certainly a moment of calm at the front of the field, anyway. And I'd imagine back here in the midfield as well. Surely it's got to be getting more spread out here as well because of the way that we've seen them start the race. It was absolutely on from the start and it never really stopped. There was a lot going on, especially a couple of laps ago. Yeah, absolutely. Just up ahead of this train with uh, Erbrick. Yeah, that's all getting cars on to us. I think it's just in the front of shots they went through into the stadium section and he's up in the place but yeah less strange I mean you've got this five car here um, headed uh, I think it's Lurken, uh, who is in the lead of this one um, but a few drivers in behind him with lovely speed and positions Boleski definitely Braun uh, and after his collision Pavna as well uh, but it's uh, Bjorn he's going to uh, get away from Peter Daniel who is sticking with him at the moment but they're also trying to catch up to Marvin Mackenberg uh, because he holds a bit of a key to the top eight here. He's close enough for Crevy to kind of be in that train. I mean, it is very strung out, but he is closer to the top eight than he is uh, anyone further behind. He's a little bit in no man's land. I mean, he's just trying to gain, but it's, uh, there's a risk that Bjorn's going to gain to him. And he might be under pressure at the moment. Mackenberg is sufficiently far enough from those outside the top 10 to not worry about that particularly, but I don't think he's really close enough to those in front either. As Pestadani tried to make a move on Bjorn, it's Alessandro Botti and Nemchek going side by side as well. Further back, uh, that is, of course, uh, David Nemchek who qualified around there. Botti qualified around 15th, I think it was, and he's been making a couple of places so far. And he's uh, up to 12th now, is the Italian. I would still expect him to be maybe a little bit higher where he is at the moment but uh, but fair enough that's where he's found himself maybe a top 10 is on the horizon by the end of the day but he's certainly setting down especially in this uh, top 10 so we get a big uh, lot of vote opposite lock there from Orban who has been overtaken by Villa Crevy in the last few laps this is where Orban of course qualified in the uh, eighth place he's it was up to seventh because of Straitman's poor start but now he's back down to eighth again and Villa Crevy might uh, eye up to that sixth place now currently held by Bajos Nodge Absolutely, but um, there is still this fighting. I mean, the front is a little bit better, but we are getting this fight in the heat uh, between these two exotic looking cars. Daniel is not too far behind, and then uh, is carrying a, a long strike as well. So there are fights brewing, but uh, there aren't too many laps to go, of course. 9 minutes 10, I mean, Fastest laps at the moment we're looking at, 1 minute 41, 42 for the leaders um, at the moment. So only about four or five more laps to go here, maybe six if we're lucky. But yeah, uh, looking good for the likes of Ottaviani at the front and Blankenberg and Lipford because they're not really under any pressure. Uh, and they'll just hope to consolidate their position to start in a good place for race two. Uh, it's Petr Daniel back down the inside of uh, Felix Bjorn again. Uh, and they're absolutely locked together here. The two of them in almost exactly the same livery. Not quite, of course, but Petr Daniel with slightly more yellow on board, I guess you could say, is back inside the top ten again. Back ahead of, of Felix Bjorn, who is demoted. And you've got to say that over the last couple of laps, that has been coming. We've been seeing those two nose to tail, and Petr Daniel has looked stronger, and only now is he able to find his way through. Absolutely, and while they have been fighting, Botti uh, has caught up that little bit. He's just over a second behind now when he was a, a two, three seconds back a couple of laps ago. So he is arriving on the scene as well, and Ron will hope to stay close to Petr Daniel. But it does look like Daniel has a more pace at this stage. Um, he's pulling a little bit of a gap at the moment uh, to the Swedish driver. But, um, 
Still a few laps to go, but it's it's possible here for Bjorn to start coming under pressure from the likes of Botti, uh, who wouldn't mind getting up a couple of positions, but this is where we might see some fighting for some positions if we're not getting it up front. We might be seeing it for the back end of the top ten. I think it's more likely to be back here than it is anywhere else in the field, really, unless we look a little bit lower even uh, in the field. Uh, through going uh, through the bottom of the shot there was the battle between the likes of uh, of Kunza and, and Petterman maybe who might be close enough and Felix Bjorn has gone wide into turn two well he's really gifting them over now Petter Daniel had to fight his way through Alessandro Botti has got one for free and now David Nemchek is going to get one himself as well Victor Streitman is on his case too and the uh, in the light blue and black car you can see we go on board with him now is he going to be late enough on the brakes here no Felix Bjorn arguably too late on the brakes nearly went straight into the back of uh, Nemchek decided to turn out of it did the Slovakian and thankfully got out of the way uh, making absolutely sure there'd be no contact but Felix Bjorn loses another place he's now down for 13. I mean, Streitman's there just discovering parts of the track he didn't know existed on the exit with the over steer that he had. But yeah, not able to get past Bjorn yet, but you just feel like it's just a matter of time what he can get through on the Swedish driver um, because he needs to try and keep a touch with the drivers in front. The likes of Nemchek, the Botti and Daniel, who he might be a little bit more on pace with. He can't be stuck behind Bjorn too much, but he's gone very wide through there. That won't come from out as tall as we have a look at the battle in behind. I think this one now for P17. Lovren still holding off Gordon and Erbreit, uh, and Klavner as well in the back of this train. But a few more trains are forming after the chaos we saw at the start. Yeah, we, uh, we are seeing this. I mean, this has been a staple of the race through the midfield anyway, maybe not at the front, but with the midfield. We're seeing a lot of this. That's Brun going wide. Erbreit is going to be getting through here. And that was uh, pretty easy, really, for the German. And uh, Klavner is going to try and do the same as well to get out of 20th place. Remember his spin at the penultimate corner, of course, not so long ago. And he made up three places, but without really doing anything in the lap after that. And now he's back inside the top 20 all over again. He looks to the inside of Brun. Is there going to be that move? No, but he did attempt it, I guess just had a nose down the inside there he would have got into trouble if there'd have been contact of course because of his lack of commitment but he uh, didn't go for it anyway and so uh, stays behind for now as they run down towards the hairpin there is Alessandro Ottaviani he's miles away from the hairpin now he's already about half a minute ahead of those drivers with still five to go he has controlled this race to perfection so far yeah it's been really impressive to see how well he's controlled it from the front he's never looked back really it was a good start off of the line and um yep he's been driven away from the rest of the field there's been no competition really if you notice in the back there you see luciana vitford close to colin blankenberg uh, so we might get a little bit of a battle developing here for p2 vitford does seem like he's coming back at the german driver in his home race of course three germans in the top five um and four in the top nine if you look back to marvin mackenberg they are doing relatively well in uh, their home break of the season but vitford hoping to spoil the party he's only a few tenths behind Blankenberg now Ooh, but that mistake through tunnel isn't going to help him out very much he bounces over that curve no that is not uh, helpful at all the instant limit by the way is set at 30 for uh, for this season in the Carrera Cup so we'll just bear that in mind um, and they will be through turn one you would imagine the Nord curve of course but Luciano Vitver just hasn't been able to find his way through so far he has of course wins in the GT3 Pro Series Championship despite only winning one race of that season he is uh, or has been a champion there can he get up into second place here ahead of Blankenberg who won the final race of that season no is the answer Vivit by the way is third all time for race room ranked championship wins it that's individual race wins of course with the three in the KTM GTX trophy last season he also had that one in the GT3 Pro Series of course uh, and he also has one in the MX-5 so he is, really is a bit of a jack of all trades uh, and he's on the podium again right now as Felix Bjorn makes his way back in front of Victor Strachman clearly these two are uh, uh, having a, a battle that is not ongoing that's for 13th place Erbish and Lofgren fight as well for 17th uh, place Klavner and Braun as well it's all going on it's all to happen in the final three minutes it'll be two laps to go over the line yeah so it's good moves all round here uh, from Brown on Klavner through towards the Mercedes and it's going about lap around the outside he's going to try that one again I mean we've seen that go very wrong um, earlier on this evening and 
exactly that. Was it? I think it was Nej. Yes, it was Nej going wide. Um, no such problems here for the Slovakian. He will carry on in 20th, but now Kovalevsky is really in the party, and he might look to try and get a top 20 out of absolutely nowhere. But yeah, this is really developing uh, with two to go at the line to be something that will be incredibly interesting to see who can pick up the positions on the final lap of this race one. Yeah, it will be. So in towards the, oh, that was a big slide. Uh, not sure who that was, but there was a big slide through the penultimate corner anyway. Colin Blankenberg, he's got a decision to make here. Do you shorten the distance through the power marker and make sure that you are uh, keeping your lap time down or do you go for the defensive? He's tried to hedge his bets, but I don't think he's got the inside line and the defense quite right here. Luciano Vipman might have the place, but he's broken a bit earlier. Is that Blankenberg compensating for his wide line? I think it was, and he's done it very, very well. Talk about good defensive drive. The initial part went a bit wrong through the power Monica, but his late breaking has saved him there, and he will remain in second for now. It's still two minutes to go, of course. That will be one more chance, one more time into the hairpin for Luciano Vivert. Yeah, he's going to have to use all his tricks and skills to try and keep uh, the Dutchman behind because he really is looking keen to get through. That They've dropped a couple of seconds now uh, once again to Ottaviani. It was only 2.6 a couple of laps ago. It's now nearly five. So those guys really are starting to drop. And maybe it's Blankenberg just dropping off the pace a bit. But still seems like he has the pace he had at the start of the race. Um, but like the Kunzer and Petterman, they are in shot at the back there. But they do seem a little bit too far back maybe to join this battle with only... Um, two, will it be two to go? Oh, no, just one, one to go now. Uh, final lap as they round the final corner. Uh, and they'll just really be that one good chance of it, but into the hairpin to see if he can snatch P2 at the end. It'll be 12 laps here for this one and possibly 17 or 18 for the second race in that case. But uh, it's going to feel like just a little bit too short right now for Luciano Vip. But is this the last? Well, this is the last chance. Is it going to pay off though? Does he have the momentum to make this work? He's got a better line out of turn two. He'll give him a wider entry for three and four, which will hopefully allow him to get a better run to the Parabolica. Another de decision to make here for Colin Blankenberg. And smartly, he's gone for the shorter distance around the turn, but then drifted out to the right-hand side. That's what he was aiming to do last time, really. Fitbit's not having any of it, though. He switches to the inside anyway, into the hairpin. And this time, Blankenberg was not expecting it. And he's not been able to defend quite as well. And Luciano Fitbit does make that pass. That's the second. Yeah, and right when he needed to as well. It was his last proper overtaking of Pinti for the race. We've had quite a few laps in this one, but maybe Blankenberg's coming back at him around the outside. No, not quite. It's not got enough grip. The up and under might work out, but not in the end. And Bitfoot looks like he might be comfortable enough. It is a bit pedestrian in this final sector. Of course, difficult to go too wide, especially if you are of similar pace to try and send it down the inside. But Bitfoot, right at the end, when he needed to make the move, he did. And that is why he has wins in all the categories he's competed in the right championship. Well, now, as in front, Alessandro Ottaviani is going to be taking the race one win. The first race in the Race Room Ranks Championship Carrera Cup will be taken by Alessandro Ottaviani, who has demolished the field here today. Colin Blankenberg will miss out on that second with Luciano Vipert taking that away from him in the end. And further back, it'll be Nico Kunzer and Martin Petterman who round out the top five in the end. A great battle for second place as we enjoyed there, it has to be said. But Alessandro Ottaviani completely dominated that race from the front. Yeah, a little bit scary for everyone else going into race two that he might be uh, the one to beat. You see here, his best lap, uh, the fastest of anybody's. Um, as a 41.5, so he really does look like he has some very good pace under him. But behind, there are some good battles. Vitfoot and Blankenberg, they may resume battle once again in race two. But don't get out of the likes of Kunzer and Petterman. If they get a good start, they could find themselves in the fight as well. But I think the launch off the line for Vitfoot is going to be crucial. If he can get past Ottaviani, that makes a race of it. But if he can't, then I think Ottaviani might just pull away once again. Well, it was Ottaviani who took the win by about five seconds out of Luciano Bitburg and Colin Blankenberg. Nico Kunzer finished fourth ahead of uh, Martin Petterman. Bowser Snodz held on to sixth in the end ahead of Villa Crevy, who overtook Christian Orban in that one. Marvin Mackenberg made his way inside the top ten, and so did Petter Daniel. In 11th, it was Alessandro Botti who made up a few places during that race. David Nemechek uh, finished 12th ahead of Felix Bjorn and Victor Stregmans, who dropped about eight places in that race. Jesper Antis got up to 15th ahead of Radisad Orptal 
Then it was Rasmus Lofgren who got inside the top 20. So did Frida Brunn, Jacek Kovalevsky, Jan Nicholas Erbrich to round out the top 20. So there are your race one results. And that sets the tone for the second half of our proceedings this evening. A half an hour race. And I, I do wonder in some ways, Darren, with no reverse grid, with no ballast on board for, for, for anybody, no weight, extra weight on board, how different is this second race actually going to be in comparison to the first one when, it, you know, the only thing different really is they added 10 minutes at the end. You could argue that uh, with race one being set by qualifying, that was realistically a pace set grid with race one already done. The drivers who maybe had a bit of a poor race, who maybe got pushed wide or had a spin or uh, the likes of Mihai Nezhi at the back may be able to come through a bit more. So we might see some more fighting in the mid pack. Um, but at the same time, at the front, we might just see a similar story, and it might just depend on the getaway from the line. Well, let's uh, let's find out. We're, of course, not that far away from the second race of the evening. It's myself, Ian Lalir, alongside Darth Thacker here for the opening round of the Race Room Carrera Cup, part of the Race Room Ranked Championship for 2023 Season 2. We have you know, previous series champions on board, some of the uh, most successful Race Room Ranked Championship drivers on the grid here this evening. Luciano Vivert, the most successful of them. Five race wins and a title to his name. Mihai Nez is the, uh, uh, another one with a title to his name on this grid, by the way. He's the only driver with a title who's never won a race room ranked championship race. Um, so there's a stat for you that may not last for too much longer. Surely the day where Mihai Nez takes a race win is uh, not too far uh, away. We've also got the likes uh, of uh, Marvin Mackenberg on the grid, who's got a race win. So is Villa Crevy in the Race Room Ranked Championship, also with a uh, race win. Colin Blankenberg, who I've mentioned his win at the Nordschleife, of course. And there's that to win in Germany and has done uh, as recently as a few months ago. There's plenty of big names on the grid here in the first ever Carrera Cup round. Second race of which is going to get underway pretty shortly. Surely, though, it's very difficult to look past Alessandro Ottaviani as he takes his first race win in the Race Room Ranked Championship history surely he is going to be uh, a, you know a, a big big favorite for this second one as well absolutely and just less than a minute to go before the race start he will be thinking about that launch off the line he controlled it very nicely in race one but it's not always true that lightning strike well no, lightning doesn't strike twice that's the saying isn't it um so it's not necessarily true that he will get uh, as good of a launch as he did i remember in the ktm series um one in the first round I think it was Enzo Filippo who got a great launch in the first race and controlled it from the start. But then Wittfurt got a very good launch in the second race and they were just about to stay ahead until the end. So that is something we've got to think about and Wittfurt might be able uh, to repeat that feat if he can get a very good launch towards turn one now. Well, that is true. He is a bit closer than he was before, of course, and they'll be sharing the front row very shortly when we get this race underway. It's the race two of the Race Room Carrera Cup here for round one at the Hagenheim ring. Alessandro Ottaviani versus Luciano Vitbert on the front row as the red lights come on now. Half an hour of racing here at the Hockenheim ring, ready to get underway. Ottaviani from the front gets a good launch and in the end, Vitbert can't get anywhere near him. He will in fact pull in front of Colin Blankenberg who stays firm. Then it's Nico Kunzer and Martin Batterman to round out the top five here in the early moments of this race. The lead is getting up to a good start and again for the second race in a row, it's a clean run through turn one. In fact, the top five remain single file into turn two as well. It's Villa Crevy and Bausas Nord, the TCR champion from 2022, going side by side right now. Although one will be pushed out wide unceremoniously uh, a little bit further back as well. Alessandro Potti is inside the top ten at the moment and already those leaders get strung out. It's certainly not strung out in the mid pack though. Look at this in the midfield, side by side for sixth place. Crevy versus Nodge, but three wide, maybe more further backwards. Four wide, very briefly, in towards the hairpin. Miraculously, they all make it through. Yeah, I don't know how some of them have done that. I think it was four wide uh, from some of those guys. Just onto the apex. Peter Daniel had a great start up to P9, but off to Viani. Once again, controlling it from the front is Victor Crevy. Uh, just controls the line ahead of Nodge and Mackenberg. And he's had a good start as well, but yeah, in the mid-pack there are two, three wide. But they are still right up close to each other. The trains are still oh. falling, but it's in a horrible stop for Kovalevsky because he's gone around. Yeah, it's Kovalevsky who was uh, inside the top 20 for much of the first race. He's not going to manage that again, you wouldn't imagine, in race two because he drops down uh, to the very back of the field through the 
the exact curve they all go now to complete the end of the ending lap. Alessandro Ottaviani leads now by nine tenths of a second. Hedda Luciani bit that he tries to chase him down here for that second position, for that win even, but I'm not sure it's quite going to be able to manage it in all honesty. And it's a, a big gap already. Ottaviani controlling once again. He was, of course, race winner in the Daytona 2.4 hour here on Race Room in 2022, that being the GTE. Uh, class of that race of course he absolutely got out front and dominated that race and he's doing it here once again in the Carrera Cup as well further back's where the action is that was Alessandro Botti holding off David Nemchek for 10th place absolutely what a Swedish train rolled over with uh, Ontis Bjorn and um, Erfgren uh, just behind this train as well and that's not to say that they won't be fighting for the as well let's see if there are going to be any moves this time around it looks like there's a couple of looks up the inside for Bjorn oh, but he's gone no. very deep oh that's a contact and that might see a couple of drivers just sneak up the inside the likes of Orban who's just found his way through and Nemchek as well well that was oh and, and there's more going on there as Otto tried to make his way through on Bjorn and had to put the Put the brakes on there. Straightman's will look to the inside into the Mercedes Arena, maybe, and try and get through. But that was all too late on the brakes from everybody on the way down in towards the hairpin. Uh, and there was a, a unavoidable contact for some. Uh, and for some, it was just a real big error. As Otto goes backwards, it's Braun who's making the positions at the moment. Free wide, very nearly further up as Orban gets in front of Nemchek. What a big slide that was uh, for Lofgren, it looked like maybe in the uh, red and black. It certainly was through the number one curve he's looking for a way through as well once again it's a carbon copy of race one the midfield is where the action is absolutely whereas the front is very much strung out already the midfield is very very much going at it with his goal they know this position's to be gold dust uh, as we go through the next few minutes we'll look at that charlie monk um and i think that's one of the hungarian drivers near the back as well you hash uh coming together seemingly as they slip right down to the back of the field together uh, but that is not a good start for them. It promotes the likes of uh, Ornash uh, up to 23rd. Bitelet, uh, they weren't around in race one. And Mihai Nej already up to 21st in this race. He's made up at least 10. I think he's actually made up 11 because I think he started last in this race. We've only been going two and a, uh, two and a third laps or so. so. Side by side, pending surely here towards the chicane again, or the hairpin, I should say, Ontis on the inside line on this occasion it's Orban with a bit of a later breaking but too late this time complimented Blankenberg for late breaking into the hairpin before of course but he did that a lot better than that on that occasion as Opto goes way off the road there and uh, Mihanez is able to get up ahead of him that just shows you how much has gone on so far Mihanez is already into 20th place and he started outside the top 30. That was, a, that was a display of late braking, but not an impressive one because he did very much brake far, far, far speed and went too far. Yeah. But I mean, look at the drivers like it, Nod. He's under attack from Peter Daniel now. Of course, I don't think he would have been this close if he would have been for the, um, uh, the regrid, if you like, of in the order that they were. But he's able to be right up behind and maybe the pace that he had in the race, uh, in race one, is coming through. Uh, to race two as well, didn't maybe have the qualifying pace, started a little further back. He does have the race pace and it is very much showing in the moment. It's Brontis, he is not looking comfortable either as they all fly through. There are battles very much forming here um, for the race ahead, 24 minutes to go. Lots of, uh, lots of battles forming, so through turn one, they go again. Right up over the curves they go, and Ontis already forced to defend from Orban very defensive as well almost dives for the early part of the apex which is a little bit odd christian orban just goes round the outside and still keeps his nose in there for four that was very close between the two and surely ontis is going to be under pressure here he takes the long route around the parabolica leaving everybody else a difficult decision nemchek goes to the inside here of ontis which returned to the outside of course of orban excuse me for the hairpin now who's going to break latest here so Ontis who hangs on to all the places. What about Orban? Can he uh, hold on to his? I think he might well do. Although it's a good exit from Nemchek and he'll have the slip stream on the outside as well. To go round the outside through the right hand and that is right stake stuff through there. And through goes Nemchek into 12. He does make his way through. Orban pretty wide and Lofgren will try and make his way through as well. Absolutely door to door these two as they make their way around turn 10. 
great battling between them, and Orban still remains on the inside and should hold on to the place as well. Yeah, Nortel, they're making a little mistake looking behind Ornlash um, as they go through. But this battle for P12, or P11, I should say, P10, oh no, it is P11, uh, is absolutely crazy as we just saw. I mean, the Asperantis is holding on, but no one knows how really, because Nemchak, Orban, Lurfer, and Bjorn, uh, Breitman, uh, and Davila as well, they are all right behind him and they are pushing him down the road nearly. But in doing so, they are starting to fight for themselves, which is just allowing um, the Asperantis to stay in front. Marvin Mackenberg now, he's coming under a bit of pressure from Botti for P9. Uh, Daniel not too far ahead either, but look through turn one. They are all over the road in behind, too wide, it looks like, in towards turn two. Uh, but will they all make it through? Orban and Nemchek look like they're going to go side by side through this time. Yeah, they do. A little bit further back from this, and there they are. Oh, contact! Very close between them all over again. It's Ontis and Orban that's who made the contact there. So Nemchek will get a run on both of them. Rothbun will have the slip stream of all slip streams now with three in front of him and he moves to the inside line now on the way in towards the hairpin. Late breaking for everybody, too late, way too late from Ontis. That was, uh, it was Orban, excuse me, as he tried to make his way through on Ontis. Orban just went way, way too late on the brakes and he's actually made it quite difficult for Nemchek now as he tries to hang on from Lofgren. Lofgren trying to hang on from Bjorn even. And side by side they go again in towards the Mercedes Arena. There's more contact and they will sort it out. But Orban loses so many places as a result of that mistake. Looks like he may be able to get one straight back here. It looks like he's going to try and come down the inside. Yes, he is. Of Strikeman's and also with Bjorn as well. If he can make it, there's contact there. The Belgian driver is going to step up the inside of one and two as well. So they are still finding it out absolutely um, crazy stuff as they come through this final sector. Behind there is P18, and he will be right on the back of this pack very shortly indeed. Do not count out a top 15 finish for him just yet as they come through the final couple of corners. That's a rare slide for Bjorn, and he has dropped so far down the order in the. Oh no, he has to try to get Jasper but he is dropping down a little bit, and Davila. It'll be the next one to have a go, as if that wasn't enough, Bitfoot and Blankenberg are that close together. They are pretty close together as well. We'll keep an eye on them, of course, over the course of the last 20 minutes. They try and chase down Alessandro Otto Bionni, but it should all be uh, irrespective of the result from here. Otto Bionni running away at the front of the field at the moment. That's, uh, of course, not where battles are. Nika Kunta is uh, hanging on from Petterman and, uh, and Krebi as well, who's up to sixth place. Now, he's past Paljas Nodge. Mr. Daniel's made up a couple of places. Well, McAvoy has stayed where he is. And Alessandro Botti is inside the top 10. There you can see that. But just keep your eye on the right hand side hit here for that uh, midfield battle. And Nedge and Bron have caught up. And in fact, they're fighting between themselves. It's uh, Urbis who makes his way uh, down the inside of Bron. And uh, side by side, they'll go. The two Germans in pretty much, from what I can tell, is exactly the same livery there. And it is. Uh, they make their way side by side through this fast right hander. Sorted out in the end, and on the inside, Erbrich stays in front. Does he? Well, we'll see about that. Uh, yes, he does stay in front and makes his move into 19th. This is where the real battle is from 11th on backwards. It has just been on since the start, and it's not going away yet either. And with Nej fighting his way through, you know, he will hope that he has the pace to come through for this, uh, this group of cars, but you never know. I mean, if they start fighting up front, then definitely. Uh, he'll be gaining quite a bit of time, but he's got to get to the likes of Davila and Bjorn before he gets to uh, anywhere near Jesperontis or Nemchek up in front. But, you know, you can never count him out. He's only a third of the race is gone, and he's already made up 14 positions. Now, granted, early laps, it is, of course, easier to make a choice position, but it shows how much pace he's got under him. Uh, and he will surely be able to use it in the next uh, 20 minutes or so to try and get him the highest position possible for the end of this race. Just say a lot about, about both, really, both his pace and the opening moments of this race, I think. But Colin Blankenberg gets close to Bitburn again, and this time there's a fight. Well, I wasn't expecting this quite so early. Blankenberg maybe wasn't either, and he breaks too late this time. He is good on the brakes on the outside line there into the hairpin. We've seen that in the past, but that was a bit too ambitious on that occasion, and he drops back again. Yes, Barontis is on the defensive again, this time from uh, Nemchek on the way in towards the hairpin. And the Savanki has done a decent job around the outside there through that corner. And Yes, Barontis will hang on to the place. I think everybody has hung on to their respective places 
even Mihonez couldn't make his way through on Davila on that occasion. That doesn't mean Jesperantz is out, the, out of the water just yet. Round the outside goes Nemchik. That was good on the brakes, but no room for space round there either. It seems that even with only one car behind him, Jesperantz is still only on the defensive in this race. Yeah, he's just driving on the mirrors at the moment, and all the time he is losing time to the cars behind, because by taking those defensive lines, of course, he is slowing himself and Nemchek down through those corners, and it's allowing the likes here of Lurker and Strikemans to gain. Orban as well will be biding his time. Bjorn, Nez and Davila, and Nez getting past the Spaniard now as well, and he is unleashed to go after this train. Um, you don't know where to look in this train, really, do you? There is fighting up and down it, but this time, it is Lurker, and oh, he really is defending here from Streitman, who is so keen to get past. Uh, and Orban is there just in case they make a big mistake and he can slip through on both of them. Well, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely the place to be this battle right now. Streitman, I, I believe, didn't get a good run through that corner at all. And uh, Christian Orban, I think it is, down his side now, is it, on the way in towards turn two. Here they'll go. There's a big stack up on the inside there, and round the outside, Streitman's able to hang on anyway so that was ideal that was quite wide from Orban Bjorn was almost too close to take advantage of it Victor Straitman is close enough as well to take advantage of Lothbrook and it's uh, not down to a mistake particularly for the Swede but uh, it, it doesn't really matter to Straitman he'll be going down the inside everyone will be breaking late hopefully not too late wow that was close as Bjorn and Orban had their own fight there it was Bjorn who very nearly made contact with others on the way towards the hairpin they sorted out again with done just at the halfway mark in this race and still they cannot leave each other alone absolutely not and that's an inside line there from Nez is it too late he's trying to get two into the one corner and I think he might do it yes he does he gets there on Bjorn and Orban it wasn't the cleanest of moves there was contact between the Romanian and the Swedish Bjorn but he's through and he's up into P15 he might have to come under pressure though into the right hander into the stadium section can he hang on all the way around the outside uh, just about, he's just hanging on, just onto the track. It's difficult to keep it out of the gravel. The inside line should see him through. No, it doesn't because Bjorn comes back up the inside of him. But he just about will stay ahead. Will he? I think he will. And he finally will. Oh, but he won't. There's contact. And Nej back in the barrier. There was a big contact there. Was it Nej coming across the track? Was it Bjorn putting his nose where it shouldn't have been? Either way, Nej, he's dropped right back down to 22nd. And that is his hopes in this race for over. That's going to be the argument. Was it Bjorn or Nez at fault for that one? And it, it's, it certainly has done one thing. It's put an end to a really great drive from Mihai Nez. I don't think he'll have too much damage as a result, thankfully. But even so, what disappointment for the Romanian, who, of course, uh, won the TCR title back in 2022. Unfortunately, it's not a good start to this title charge in the Carrera Cup here this season. Luciano Vivert stays in front of Colin Blankenberg, by the way. This is the second place. The race and the top five are still exactly the same as to what they finished in race one. David Nemchek down the inside of Jesperontis in towards the hairpin. And we'll see if he makes this one at work. In fact, it's the outside line. The screen has pushed him uh, all the way round the long way. But he might well have it anyway. He's run the long way through this fast right-hander as well. He fights with the car, but uh, that means he has to stand on the brakes immediately. They're both late on there, but Nemchek has the inside and finally has 11th place. Taking him half the race, we've got 15 minutes up to 30 left, and he will now try his absolute harness to get away from Jasperontis and towards uh, Botti and Mackenberg further up the road. It will be difficult because there is a good five second gap between them, but that will be his target. He will hope to drive on his windscreen rather than the mirror, but Jasperontis not losing too much time just yet. Uh, but they still continue to fight, don't they, through here, Erbright? Um, and Braun fighting, it seems, as they come through. Or is that a break? I think that's Davila, I apologise. Um, fighting over P17 in the Spaniards. He was losing positions to Nez a couple of laps ago. And now the German down the inside at the final corner. Looks like he's made a move here. And it'll just allow Brown and Vitalec as well to maybe have a go into the second corner. If they both get a bad run through turn one. And a dive that was into the final turn. Davila goes very, very wide through the first turn and they're going to stack up even further for that. He might well land himself in some trouble for that because he has effectively overtaken 
using the uh, the off of the circuit there. Erbrecht goes way too late on the brakes that time though. And Darrell goes straight through anyway. Side to side contact with Vitalek. And now Brun will try and go through on both of them, will he? Not sure whether he's going to manage it on board with Frida Brun now. As he pulls in front at their Deserbris of Vitalek, who will be going backwards now. Although Vitalek not lying down. He's, oh, looking to the inside. Contact twice. Vitalek limps out of it and probably smartly so as well. Erbrich is sternly defending these places and there's starting to be a bit of contact made between these drivers. Yeah, he's, uh, no one shall pass uh, Erbrich at the moment, but yes, Brontius, uh, the troubles continue. Uh, that Strikeman's trying to come back at him. Um, but around the outside, Lerper as well on the Belgian. No, not quite this time around, but you can see the gap. Nemchak has pulled to Jesper Ontis. Just this lap is massive. But look at the front here. Petterman, Kunza um, and Krevi are all fighting over B, uh, B4 this is at the moment. Uh, and we didn't really see this one coming, did we, Ewan? But we have now got a battle uh, for some of the higher positions in this race. Kunza, uh, Petterman and Krevi, they are going to be keen to get through and get the big points in this race, especially as if they're racing for fourth next week, they won't be facing a success ballast, whereas the front three might. Absolutely, and I think realistically, whoever finishes fourth out of there might well take the uh, fourth place for the round as well. We'll obviously update you on that in three weeks' time when we come back again for the second round at Imola here in the race room Carrera Cup. Through turn one again, and yes, Brontis is the cork in the bottle again. I thought that him and Nemchek had gotten away sufficiently to the battle between themselves for the end, but no. Esperantis is the cork in the bottle again. Victor Straitman's is just behind. Then it's uh, Robert Lofkin with uh, uh, Felix Bjorn and Christoph Orban all in one long line. Five cars fighting for this one place in the order now. Bjorn tucks out of the seat. Doesn't want any part of this, but Straitman's does want this. He wants the outside line and he's got it. Oh, it's late on the brakes from Bjorn. And around he goes slightly. It's set the cam onto the pigeon slightly, actually. And it may have helped his compadre, yes, Brontis, to hang on to that place inadvertently. Yeah, it might have done. Um, definitely not his aim, just rear locking, it seemed, uh, in the apex of the corner, just to try and get it stopped. But yes, Brontis still defending the position. He is just clinging on to every position he can at the moment. And uh, it is proving incredibly difficult. Nemchak is just disappearing from view. And Streitmans and Lefkan and Bjorn and Orban, they all know this. And they all know that they've got to get through on Ontis to have a chance at going further up the road. But as it stands with every passing corner, they're losing more and more time. It's becoming more and more impossible to get up any higher than 12. Yeah, it's becoming very, very difficult for everybody here. And they're all in... Oh, they're all wishing he went wide, and he has done. Yes, Perontis makes a mistake into the penultimate corner, and that's the chance that Straitman has been waiting for. Now is Lofgren going to take advantage as well? No, he won't be able to uh, make a uh, make a, uh, make a move on this occasion. Through turn one, no go. It's a slide a little bit from Perontis. Will Lofgren be able to fight his way back down the inside here? Will he have to wait for the hairpin? Looks like it's going to be the hairpin as uh, Orban and Bjorg go briefly side by side was uh, quite close but slide from Orban and he hangs on to that position as well. I actually think that Lofgren's exit off of turn four there wasn't maybe good enough in towards the hairpin. Absolutely not. Yes, Brontis looks like he's comfortable enough to defend it this time around as they come towards the breaking zone off the hairpin. But look at the front. Altaviani just very comfortable. But at the back, is that Orban trying to come around the outside? I think it is. Yes, the Hungarian driver trying a little bit more creative move to get through on Lerfgren here. And he have a little bit of a run in towards the Mercedes Benz corner. The left hander that is a relatively heavy braking zone. Does he got the run through the right hander? Oh, it's a very big sore on the steering wheel. But he's not going to be able to have the run. Trying a little bit of an up and under, but it's not going to work out. I think a little tap of the rear as well. And he will have to stay in P4, uh, P15, I should say, now. Uh, and Bjorn is not too far behind either. But this battle just continues. Um, but Strikeman's passed on to us, and that is going to be critical. Well, it is. But saying that, he's not actually got away very well. We've seen Nevchek get away uh, quite well. He's now five seconds down the road. But uh, Strikeman hasn't been able to do the same. Wouldn't expect five seconds out of him, but you'd expect at least one. And he's not managed that even uh, just yet. Ontis even went in, going a little bit wide there through the penultimate corner as well. Now out of the 
final corner to complete lap 12, expecting 17 or 18 in this race with just nine minutes remaining. Now, this second race has flown by I've got a, a little bit more, I've got to say, even despite the slightly longer length, of course, 1.5 times uh, extended distance for half an hour here in the second race. And you wouldn't know it, really. This battle has kept us royally entertained so far, and it continues to do so with Orban looking on the outside of Rasmus Lofgren. Yeah, absolutely, but the line he's taken there through turn two has shoved him out very, very wide indeed. It's only going to invite Bjorn to come up the inside now. Yes, it will. And he'll have the inside line through the bar parabolic corner, uh, which should see him relatively safely. Look now, Petterman uh, and Kunza fighting it out for P4, and Kunza is now having to uh, drive a bit on his mirrors and deep through the corner. Is that going to invite the line from Petterman? I think it will, and they're going to go side by side as we reach towards the, uh, the final sector of the racetrack. That is the first mistake, really, for we've seen from Kunza the entire day. Martin Petterman looks around the outside. It's not going to happen for him on that occasion, and it's only bringing those in behind closer together. Villa Crevy in sixth place, of course, and Balzash Norris as well, who uh, was a, a, a TCR champion back in uh, 2022. I was saying that about Nez earlier, wasn't I? I meant the BMW Championship that Nez won and uh, Nod won the two CRs, you get what I mean. Uh, anyway, they're all in this uh, train at the moment. Nez back in 18th, by the way, but Nod is onto the back of this one. Kunter is going to be looking in his mirrors right now with his compatriot Martin Petterman, who's been challenging all day so far, really, but not been able to make the way through. And as I mentioned earlier, that realistically, any of these four who finished in this four position should get fourth for the round as well. And as we said earlier on, that's the first position without ballast. Maybe that will be advantageous at Imola. Absolutely. And that will be playing in their minds a little bit here, especially if there is no hope of them getting up to uh, up to the for Frankenberg unless there was a big error from one of them. Uh, they are basically racing for fourth here, and it is going to be a massive advantage to not have the ballast at Imola, uh, but be leading the championship of those without the ballast. Outside line, though, well, I think that was Noj trying to come round Krevi. Krevi defends valiantly uh, as they come through the hairpin. They are still going at it. It's definitely it's not over. The likes of Daniel and Mackenberg as well are close together as Kunza. Once again, a defensive line through this. Oh, board. dear. It will serve them well, but that's Krevi going deep. Uh, very, very deep on the brakes from Villa Krevi, far too deep, and uh, Valtas Nodge makes his way through uh, as a yellow flag for Erbrich, unfortunately, in the hairpin, I would imagine. Uh, but, uh, well, it's sector three, actually, so maybe it was uh, even uh, back further around the lap, but uh, I don't believe that necessarily. I think it was the hairpin on that occasion. Anyway, uh, Villa Krevi drops to seventh place, unfortunately, and Valtas Nodge is uh, maybe going to have a top five in his sights at the moment. He's back to where he qualified. Oh, sorry, back to where he finished in the uh, first race. It was, of course, overtaken by Krevi in that uh, first race. And, oh, sorry, in the first part of this race. It looks like he may well finish there again. Just wonder whether Krevi's maybe gone out a bit too hard on his tyres and whether he's suffering uh, with that because he's only getting stronger as race one went on. But, of course, we're past race one distance now. Absolutely. This extended 10 minutes when we were minutes or so deep into that time. Um, They've got four to go, including this one, if my maths is correct. Might be five, but I think it's four uh, as they come through. Uh, it is a good lead for Ottaviani, which is to uh, think about, to be fair, because, of course, he is the one that will dictate when this race ends. Um, because if he crosses the line with time on the board, we'll have another lap. But if he crosses the line with zero, then, of course, the race will end. But all Bannon the one fighting out over P14 now. It's just inviting Lerfgren back towards them. And yes, Brontis. First time ever, I think, uh, in this race. It's not got anyone to defend from this time into the hairpin. It'll be on Orban, Bjorn and Lofgren to try and provide a bit of racing action. And I think that'll be an inside line now. Uh, all but a little bit too deep for Orban. And that'll allow Bjorn up the inside. But he'll give him a good exit uh, out of the corner. And they're going to go side by side through the fast right-hander. And he'll come out on the brakes on top here. Well, that's very close through the fast right-hander. It's a difficult corner to go side by side through and on this occasion it's Orban who prevails, Bjorn's on the outside he's not going to be able to manage it, he needs to be careful of his compatriot Lofgren as well who I think was a little bit scared of getting turned across there and so just went a little bit wide and they'll all spread out as a result of all of that and they will get single file again as they go towards three laps to go you were indeed correct, it will be three to go this time around so it looks like we are going to get uh, our 18 laps at the end of the day Alessandro Ottaviani on to 
a new one in the lead of the race here at the Hockenheim. But finally now, with just four minutes to go, it looks like things are calming down. They've been calm right from the very start though for Alessandro Ottaviani on his way to another race win. Pole uh, led him down, down into turn one in race one, didn't look back, and in race two he led into turn one and hasn't looked back since. So he has been in complete control tonight, but that success ballast uh, that he will feel at Imola may be severe, but we'll have to find out how much it will cost him. Vitfer, oh, sliding on the rear. It seemed a little bit through that hairpin, but Blankenberg not able to capitalise as Kunza and Petterman fight once again, and that'll be very close from Noj diving deep into the corner, nearly hits the rear of um, Petterman there, but the German uh, of Petterman is still chasing after his compatriot. They are three, four, and five, the Germans, in their home race, but Noj and Krevi are hoping to change that with just a couple of laps to go, but Kunza really having to defend hard as he has been the last couple of laps. Uh, but if you've been watching Yes Brontes, I think he would have picked a few more tips uh, because he has been doing that seemingly all evening long. Yep. So... By the way, it's still the same top seven as what we've seen so far um, off the start of the race. From the starting grid to this in, in race two, it's just still the same top seven to what we saw earlier. Orban is the one spoiling that at the moment. He did start this race eighth. He's now at 14th. The battle we've been watching for such a long time. Just feel like the roles are reversed a little bit here for second as well, doesn't it, really? I know uh, this is the order they were in by the end of race one, but Luciano Vitbit was the one on the move. He was trying to overtake Blankenberg. This time, it's the other way around. Absolutely, in this area. Trying to get through the final couple of laps. Victor, um, Modric like to try and attack on the last couple of laps, but now uh, the roles have been reversed. Uh, and Blankenberg is the one coming at Luciano Vitfer and he has a good slipstream through the Parabolica towards the hairpin they go. Vitfer will defend the inside but will it work out for him? They're going to have to be late on the brakes with Colin Blankenberg. Will he go all the way around the outside here? Just this is the penultimate tour that they will make to the hairpin and he can't find his way through which makes you think that he's only got the one more chance into the hairpin uh, in this race to get through into P2. Luciano Vitfer might come away with second place overall this evening. Uh, but Vitfer knows that he's got to keep the position if he wants to uh, to finish second. But then again, if he finishes third, it will help him next time out at Imola when he will have less success ballast on the car. So these guys are fighting over points. But at the same time, they're fighting over who gets the bigger disadvantage in the next round. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting dynamic now between these two. If they know they're both going to have the ballast, you know, what are they going to fight for here at this this point? By the way, there's only three kilograms difference, actually. Um, 18 for second and 15 for third. So it's not actually that much uh, difference. I think I would take the points, to be honest with you. Uh, and that's what Vitbit will be hoping to do as they go on to the final lap right now. Bjorn and Lofgren have had an incident, I think, because Lofgren's dropping down the order at, like a bit of a stone. He'll stop at 19th, but Bjorn has dropped down as well. And Mihai Nez is back inside the top 15, even despite being spun around and put back to 22nd. It looks like he will finish inside the top 15. Absolutely, I don't think he can be disappointed with that because, of course, um, with that incident that saw him in the wall just a few laps ago, to recover back up to above where he was before cannot be a bad thing at all. But Blankenberg uh, will not want to finish third, absolutely not at this point, um, because he is so close to Luciano Vip, but they have been in a battle all race long, both races really. They have been pretty much two seconds, if not less, apart. But Blankenberg not going to send it to the inside probably smartly doesn't want to make a big collision there and risk the p3 but he will stay in p3 and a thought that that should be luciano it for comfortably home for second i think so there's just a few corners to go luciano it that should be still second at the end of the day and that's a decent start to the championship although he will have to figure out a way to overtake alessandro ottaviani as they all will uh, Bit of a defensive maneuver from Nico Kunza there in towards the Mercedes wing. I think he'll be okay as well to hang on to this position. But out front, Alessandro Ottaviani is going to take another race win. Before today, he hadn't won any in the race room ranked championship. In the very first race of today, he became the 20, uh, 20th, uh, excuse me, 22nd driver to win a race 
in the Race Room Ranks Championship. Now he has won two races in one night. Alessandro Ottaviani wins again at the Hockenheim and will take round one of the Race Room Carrera Cup. Luciano Vitvit will finish second, Colin Blankenberg third. And these, by the way, go for the round results as well. Kunza, Petterman, Nodge and Krevi all finished in the same positions they started. That doesn't really tell the story about the race, does it? Because the top seven finishing in the same positions they started, you might think was a boring affair, but further back in the midfield, they provided the battling for us today. Alessandro Ottaviani was ahead of all of them, though. Ahead of Luciano Vitvit by about five seconds and Colin Blankenberg as well. Kunza, Petterman, Nodge, Krevi, uh, Petter Daniel, Alessandro Botti and Marvin Mackenberg rounded out your top ten by the end of that one. It was lower than that top 10 though, Dara, where we really saw the action uh, because these guys largely stayed in the positions that they started in. Straitman's got into 11th. Yes, Brontis was the one involved in a lot of the action in 12th. Christian Orban uh, eventually finished 13th. Mihai Nez recovered to 14th. That's nearly 20 places gained in one race. Felix Bjorn was uh, 15th ahead of uh, Obratal. Then uh, Brunt. Uh, Rasmus Lofgren dropped to 18th towards the end, Erbrich uh, to 19th, and Mish got up to 20th, so that's more than 10 places gained for him. That was the region we were watching for so much of the day, and for good reason as well. Absolutely, I mean, the mid-pack really have up some fantastic action, uh, and even some of the drivers here towards the back end of the order. You look at uh, Hlavner in race one, served up a treat, and Charlie Monk coming through 22nd. We didn't really see much of him, but again, he was able to keep his nose clean uh, and pick up a few positions by the end but great racing through the mid-pack particularly it was a bit pedestrian up near the front but i think it might be a different story next time out with that success ballast he may be the quickest you've got that disadvantage coming for you so that'll be incredibly interesting to see what happens nemchak i think will be disappointed to finish all the way down in 31st but credit to Otaviana, he came he definitely saw and he definitely conquered two wins from two tonight yeah, and he will now become the 14th driver to have won two or more races in the Race Room Ranks Championship. Joining names on the on the list of two already, by the way. Joining a, a list of names like Marius Zabdik, Sebastian Rue, to name a few um, or a couple. Uh, so it's uh, it's a, already a, a high quality list of names he's put himself amongst here tonight. Uh, and and what does that do as well over the next few weeks? Because Ottaviani has not only shown that he's won the first two races, he hasn't had to battle with anyone either. What can the likes of Vitvert and Blankenberg take away from this round because um, you know they're still free to go and, and they'll be already running out of ideas as to how to stop him. Absolutely. I mean, Ottaviano isn't a name that we regularly see up near the front, so it's a bit of a new challenge for them. You know, Ottaviani might find Hockenheim his best track, he might find it his worst, which would be concerning for some of these guys, but they've just got to dig a little bit deeper. They've got to find an extra level of pace. Um, they will know that Ottaviani will have highest disadvantage of anybody uh, when we come to Imola uh, with the highest amount of ballast on the car they might be thinking that in the back of their minds that they have a chance but again it's not going to give them everything and they've got to find a way through somehow uh, that will just about do it for us here tonight let's show you where we're going to be next week though it's traveling across to Suzuka to give us three continents in three weeks to start off the race room ranks championship for season two of 2023 it's the praga cup and suzuka for the opening round of their season next time you'll be seeing the porsches will be at imola on the 15th of november so make sure you join us for that we're looking forward to uh, that one darren suzuka always an interesting one in, in a sort of more higher downforce car like the praga that is going to be an enjoyable circuit to drive absolutely and it, just look at the calendar it shows how good the uh Difference in the tracks is, I mean, Laguna, second Hockenheim and Suzuka is the first three. In fact, three fantastic tracks and they're very different in their nature um, for the drivers to race in. But yeah, Suzuka and the Praga is, is going to be definitely one to watch out for uh, as they come up through the S's. I mean, you'd hope you might see some side by side through there. Um, and yeah, good overtaking opportunities in the Praga at Suzuka and heavily looking forward to that one. Yep, two weeks after it'll be mid-Ohio for the MX-5s and then Imola, as I say, for the uh, Carrera Cup. So make sure you subscribe to the Race Room YouTube channel and check out all the stuff that's going on and uh, tune in again next week. Every single week at 8pm uh, European time, there will be... Well, Central European time, I should say. We're about to go to CET, aren't we, rather than CST? But um, you get what I mean. 8pm European time, Central European time. Uh, there will be Race Room Ranks Championship action every single week until the middle of December. And then those finales in January as well. 
to come at Daytona, Bathurst and Brands Hatch as well. So uh, make sure you join us for those. Make sure you join us every week because it's absolutely fantastic racing time and again. For now, though, we will bid our farewells. Tonight has been round one of the Race Room Carrera Cup here from the Hagenheim Ring. And we have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed ourselves with 50 minutes of racing overall and lots of great action packed into it as well. I've been Yoda Leary. Darren Thacker has been the one alongside me. And until we see you in three weeks' time for uh, the Carrera Cup, or indeed one week time for the opening of the Praga Cup, it's goodbye for now. Do you also feel the same as this car enthusiast? He's reached his vehicle dream, but suddenly the original black wheels seem a bit boring. A colorful detail would add a lot more pep and a little eye catcher to match the paint would make the car perfect. Customization options don't only transform the wheel to visually match the vehicle, but also provides one of a kind look on the road. The wheel color, rim protectors, center caps, valve caps, and even the wheel bolts can be configured and designed individually using style components of the new BBS Unlimited wheel system. And here's how it works. The BBS Unlimited base wheels are available in a total of eight different colors. Whether it be a glossy, satin, or polished finish, or from a deep indigo blue, to racing gold, to a rich bronze. Rim protectors are a colorful detail to visually enhance the wheel, while preventing damage from curb contact. In addition, the rim protectors can easily and quickly be replaced and renewed at any time. In total, six different designs are available. The center cap completes the wheel. So how cool would it be if it could also be customized? BBS Unlimited Style makes this possible. It's available in 56 millimeters and 70.6 millimeters diameters and can be applied in a variety of ways with the BBS logo. The center cap is available in 2D or 3D embossing, as well as in several color variations. And with the 3D rotation cover, the BBS logo remains visible to everyone, even when the car is in high gear. The valve caps complement the wheel in six different colors. This gives the individual wheel an even more coherent look. You can even choose the wheel bolt in the last step to match the wheel. Available in black, silver, and even titanium. With the help of the BBS Unlimited style components, you're able to create a work of art out of a conventional wheel. According to your own wishes and ideas, just take a look at our configurator. And after a few clicks, you can already start designing the perfect wheel for your vehicle. Do you have any questions about customization? Then contact the wheel expert now.